On this episode, Eric Wall stops by and we get artistic and thoughtful. Gary Bay Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 243 of the Ask Gary V Show. And I'm super excited. Another guest, Eric. Dude, you do that so good. <laughs> Actually, I've been rusty lately, but since I did it recently, I remembered what the title was. You got a big Sharpie with you, Eric Wall. Welcome to the show. Thrilled to see you, my man. Thank you kindly. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. I'm excited because you've got a big book launch, we've got a call in show. You are a killer of the art. I mean, people who are seeing this, you might have seen the version you've made for myself uh, in episodes of Daily V. You are uh, uh, a very talented dude that I've gotten to know in the last uh, year or so, and I'm excited to uh, introduce you to the audience. So for the people that don't know who you are, how do you sum yourself up? I am a disruptive strategist. So I'm, I'm a performance artist who speaks on the corporate lecture circuit. I'm also an author. Uh, flying around doing 100 shows a year for the last 12 years in a row, uh, sharing about disruption, how to innovate, how to differentiate from the competition, uh, how to embrace the future of business. But I, it's a very niche market, so it's all corporate uh, conferences, sales events, but I don't do many public shows, so I'm not, uh, I'm not a household name. I'm, I'm invisible to... Because you've been, you've been more into a B2B strategy. Exactly, right. speaking to corporate. So, so how did you get there? Did you come, I'm gonna assume just even knowing your vibe, you came up as an artist and then did you stumble into that world or did you go the other way? Help me. I'm, I'm a former, I'm a former why, suit. So I don't assume, people. <laughs> Sorry, Stefan. I have a very logical linear background. I went to school, went to, got a job out of school as a partner in a firm. Uh, Jesus. Did that for eight years, then had an early midlife crisis. and so at, at 30. At 30. I did too a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I found the arts. I, I didn't care about creativity the arts because there was no money in it. You can't yeah. make it, there's no ROI. So what kind of kid were you? So you were drawn, you were- I was an athlete. You were an athlete. Athlete and I was an alpha dog. So divide and conquer, kick ass if it was in school. What did you play? I was a wrestler. I also, you know, football, baseball, where did you grow up? in Seattle, Washington. Okay. Are you a Seahawks fan? No. I'm, I'm a recovering Seahawks. So I, I, because I watched it with my dad, Yeah. I was a Seahawks fan. I was you a love Mariner Steve fan. Larger? Yeah, you know who Steve Largent <laughs> is. Listen, we're, we're old. Yeah. I do. Jim, I'm 41 Zorn, years old. Jim Zorn threw to Steve Largent. Sherman Smith is who carried the pill. Dan Dornick. In oh, Seattle, you're, people at you're, yeah, real, I know. you're bringing it. And I also was there. But I remember Warner and David Craig. I'm like, like I remember those mid '80s Seahawks teams. And I remember Al Toon. Yeah, I remember. I don't remember Joe Namath. That no, uh, my, my dad yeah. told me. My dad so, told me about. So it. Seattle athlete, yep. alpha dog, win, win, win. Yep. Go into the job, get a good job. Da da da. Win, win, win. There. 30, 30, 30 years old. Freak out. Dot com bomb. I got flattened. Got it. So I, Why, you put your money into the market? I, everything, yeah, I was, so I was. Was that? Go, yeah, yeah, because you, Seattle, at that age, mm. I didn't, all I knew is that when I graduated from college, everything you touched Which in Which was what year? 93. Okay, uh, so you're five years older than me. Go everything ahead. you touch turns to gold. You buy InfoSpace at five, in seven days, it was at 75. So I knew this that interesting timing. I was going to, and it, it actually, you know, I, I thought I was going to retire at age, you know, 27, 28. So you were making good money at a corporate job, taking the money and investing in the market and making a killing. Killing for me. For you, correct. Yeah, for me, it was. But you know, listen, buying stocks at five that go to 170, even if you put in $10,000, you're making real money. Plus the rush of how that feels. I'm so smart. So what, were you, lit listen, it's funny because I, you know, again, I keep yelling at all these kids on Instagram that like, life's too good right now. When this crashes, shit's going to get weird. Were you, I forgot about this, this actually reminded me, were you at a place where you had your job but you were struggling to even focus on it because you kept looking at Yahoo Finance and watching yeah. the money, oh, yeah. Refresh, Guys. refresh, yeah. refresh. You were, you were watching your stocks <laughs> and I, every time my stock went up, I was like a little bit happier, I was a little bit smarter, I was a little you bit. You you were a real genius. I was closer to retirement. But 
when my stock like went down, I was I started to get pissed. I started to maybe not treat people as well, and uh, it, it was like losing a sale was when my stock went down, and it then it all went down. And we talking about two thousand? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I got destroyed. Damn. I got so, destroyed. So it was like a shark happened? attack. Were you married at this point? Yeah. To yeah that I, know, I know. I see beautiful her. woman right so there. So what? 20, Twenty-two years. So so wait, you like literally? I'm, it was April, right? It was yeah. April. So what? You just come home and like. Fuck. Nah, well, that, yeah, I felt like that. Um, but it lasted a lot longer. So the suffering, first of all, you lose everything. Then you think about everything you lost. And then you just walk around the house at night because you can't sleep because everything that I was was wrapped up in, in the, success of, in the that. success of that. And the money, my security. Self-work, yeah. I, I was addicted to security. The of security of yeah. those finances. And so when that was taken away and they said, I basically, I had to start over at ground zero, that was really depressing. Okay. With three little kids, yeah. and did you have no money. Were, yeah? And what did you have mortgages and all that good stuff? Oh yeah. So what happened? <laughs> so so what, did you lose the consult? Did you lose the job you had too? I left the job because because that you were just up. like yeah. Yeah. I, what I did is I brokered entertainment, and so well, this time, is this is the thing that again, like, listen, we're we're going a little somber start. It'll get better, <laughs> but I want everybody to pay attention because you guys know I've been on this kick that this good times can't last forever. It's not only that you don't get paid eight thousand dollars to take a photo in your Instagram with a fucking T or a thing of that. You also actually lose your other jobs too. And so like, cool. So somebody making a buck thirty a year right now, twenty. Four years old doing sponsored posts on Instagram around clothing brands and fruit and protein shakes. It's not only that you lose that because the brand's dollars sh- shred up when the economy goes soft, it's that when you then go to get a job, those jobs aren't there either. Like it goes from here to here. And you're balancing. I was balancing my ego in this as well. So my ego. Well, what do you think is wrapped up in when you say in your Instagram profile you're an influencer and you're traveling to Ibiza and Coachella and telling all your friends that you're making 180,000, 400,000, 1 million dollars a year? They expect that in, of you in perpetuity. And if you can't showcase it all the time, all of a sudden you start to feel less. I felt less. It was a very difficult time. So let's bounce from there. Let's go. Uh, that's where I... T- I want to stay there the whole time, just so everybody knows, because I want you fuckers to actually understand what the fuck we're talking about, but we'll bounce for now. It, it we'll, re- we'll, we'll go to this clip in 16 months when the world melts. Go ahead. There you go. I, so I needed to find a reason to get up in the morning. Right. I, I needed to find a reason to go on. And I didn't want to go back and try and build this business from zero and try and find what I want to do with the rest of my life. And so I actually found... Uh, life with other artists. Like other people who had suffered a little bit, I could relate to them. And they started sharing. Suffering artists like India. Starving artists. And the reason it's a cliche is because it's true. Now India's work is unbelievable and she's going to be worth millions. But she doesn't know this, but I own 49% of it when she signed her contract. (laughs) Sorry, India. Uh, go ahead. There's actually a lot. India, you need to show, you gotta show her. She hasn't been on the Ask Me show in a hundred years. All right. right. India and I have have worked closely here for a while. Go ahead. Uh, So I realized that, gosh, a lot of these artists actually aren't that happy. Even though they have these philosophies, they don't have any income. They don't have any money. They don't know how to build traction or build a brand. And so- Well, they're probably like India. They get happiness out of complaining and being starving and and the negativity. (laughs) By the way, I'm that way too. It's actually why, you know, you wanna hear this? It's actually why I really associate with that. I like the pain of the process. Mm -hmm. I really do. Like, the reason I keep fantasizing about melting is I'm excited. By the way, you think I'm excited to fire 280 people because a third of our clients fire us? You think that's interesting to me? You don't think I think about that every day in a world where we've had nothing but growth? I'm scared shitless of the pain that's gonna bring me. Truth is, you have no options. The way things go. And if, if, you're, if you're an artist looking to, to build a brand, I think there, there is a lot to learn. That's what I found is that artists did not have kind of that grind of learning how to amplify their brand to scale, how to push their genius out there. And so that's where I So you of, were businessy, yeah. went to art, and then went back to businessy around art. Right, and at this time that. is when I started to create. I'd never painted before, but it was so fascinating. You're so to me. good at it. Was it, no really, he is. Yeah, you're very talented. It, it, when, Are you fascinated by that? One thing I tell a lot of people is, you don't, people ask me, what's my passion, Gary, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, if you never had a hot dog, would you know if you liked eating hot dogs? Did you find it, were you confused that you were good at it? 
Good is a relative term. I, I sucked when I started, but I loved the process. I loved the idea of creating. I loved the idea of getting better. Art, painting was just where it kind of opened up. And I, I got branded as a graffiti artist early on, partly because uh, I loved it so much. I loved their philosophy. I loved street artists. Uh, and I also, I started doing it and hanging out with them. But I also started uh, landscape painting, figure drawing, writing poetry, doing photography. So it was, that was, and you were the gateway drug to understanding creativity as a whole. And creativity is not just painting or graffiti. It's, it's a way of life. It's an energy. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. And so that's why I took it not only into writing and into sculpture, but also into business because business is all about being creative marketing of course strategy so so actually now i'm like really deep into the vortex of this so you start making shit right you've got three kids at home and the wife yeah. what happens in that like give me give me a quick 5 second 2000 2005 you know like what happened i started writing out all these ideas that artists had the genius but no discipline to how to get their message to scale businesses had this incredible discipline but no disruptive thinking or curiosity. And so that's where I kind of wrote a presentation about how to merge the two. The, I called it the art of vision. Started painting on stage, started cranking how rock you, music. How did you get your first gig? Marketing, hustling. Uh, we created a, my wife and I created a kind of manufactured brochure. We taped a presentation. So we asked a local college, hey, can we come and deliver a presentation for free? How much did they pay you? <laughs> we got paid zero. Um, and we also paid a film crew to come and film us. Negative. Make it look like, make it look like this is something that it isn't. You know, How many presentations did you give for free in the early days? Uh, fortunately, and I know where you're going with this. But that's okay, I want your truth. I don't want you to appease my strategy. Yeah, I did probably three. But, no, no, you have to understand. Enormous amounts of people feel like that's three too many. If, if, you're, if you want to be a, a professional speaker, you should be doing hundreds If of you want to be a professional anything that nobody else wants to pay you for, you should do it for free. And when I first... That's your only way of doing it. When I first spoke, I sucked. Uh, my, my wife was super Tasha. Disappointed in you? She was super supportive. I think she <laughs> somehow... She's like, you suck at speaking. Somehow she was able to muster, instead of saying you suck, she still was able to say, yeah, you know, let's go, hun. Uh, so I felt affirmed. I'm like, okay, well, let's. But she's more that. glass half full, right? And you're she's, more glass half empty. I would say so. Yeah, I mean, yes. like, I know you guys. Not that you're so horrible, like, like, but I mean, like, but I mean, she is a little bit more. Like, her natural reaction is a little bit more positive. She's my Yoko Ono. Yep. So I'm this kind of confused John Lennon. I've got ideas, but insecure about putting them out there. I'm, that's the truth. Yeah. She's always been behind me and pushing that out there like, you know what, I think this is gonna be awesome. You know what, they're gonna go for this. And so I had a lot of support and encouragement early on from, from her. And I ended up kind of, I did a, a presentation. She hustled uh, for me to speak to some American Healthcare Association, kind of a national meeting. And inside there's 50 state associations. So blew it up. It's kind of like hitting the lotto. That was the moment. That was the moment. And you just kind of learn as you go. Yeah, 100%. What's the best way it's you Start big and then you go, you go backwards, you reverse engineer. 100%. We're about to get into a phone call. I want to do two things before we get there, Andy. Inso oh, your Facebook. Instagram, start putting your phone. Oh, you're doing Facebook. Instagram, sorry. Facebook Live is doing the phone numbers this time. Please post your uh, phone numbers and uh, we will uh, I wanna call make, some of you. I want to make one connection really quick. You're going you're gonna to be able to do that for sure. I got two other things before we do calls. Go okay. ahead. You uh, start. You gave a presentation in Dublin called Clouds and Dirt. Yes. That is the spark and the grind. It is the idea and the execution. So I just wanted to- Wait, answer. you just wrote the Clouds and the Dirt book that I've been wanting to write one day? I, I, I'm very I, I upset right you, now. I beat you, I beat but you is that, But is that the spiel? That is exactly it. And that's why I brought Rodan's thinker because he's a man of great muscularity. So it's not just this sage, he's a doer. And so he's kind of been my little mascot that I've been bringing around with me. Yes, what do you think? the Heisman Trophy. And so, and so this is, this, why, don't we, why, don't, why don't we spend another second on the book? You've written several books. This is my second major published release. I, and I've written some direct to consumer stuff before, self help. Yeah, but the, but yeah. you feel like this is your second. This book. is my second baby. How do you how do you feel that process has been? This this is your second book. How do you compare it to your first? How do you, what do you think you did better? What's different? Da, da, da. The the writing process was similar in that I love it. I love the grind of you writing. Love writing. I love writing, and I I, I, <laughs> I don't. Like. What I what I don't like is the marketing. The fact that you know I've got to like hey everyone. I, I actually don't care. I, and I'm, you hate I'm, selling. I, I, I know. By the way, no, I know no. you love selling. No, no. Be careful. I've said this. Some of you that really know me. I actually hate micro selling. 
Uh, the way I like selling is giving so much value and building so much brand that it's sold before I, I hate selling. I actually decided not to raise a fund last year. I was raising a big fund on Vayner Capital, a new fund, and I stopped because I so disliked asking people for money. I hear you. I hate it. I hate selling. I hate it. I hate the fact that this is tipped up like this, like we're trying to, to pimp it. I would prefer, I no, no, I let's like, like, put those yeah, over there and let's, let's just talk. We'll, we'll let, we'll let uh, the thinkers stand. I agree. As our I get it. I mean, every time when I'm on book tour and I'm doing something like this, I'm like, they're like, why don't you tell us why they should buy the book? I'm like, they shouldn't. Yeah. So <laughs> don't buy it. I'm I'm not interested in going through chapter by chapter anything about that book. It's it's the brand. That's one. I'm just going through. Of by the way, brand. I'm thinking about calling it crushing it, not crushed it. Okay. I'm writing my next one called crushing okay. it. It's a follow up, and like the process is fun. I do it totally different. I have a ghostwriter. I'm recording it, like doing interviews, uh, sliding down like icy yeah. driveways in Colorado while I do it. But I was curious how everybody's different process. I'm always curious about the second time. So mine is a verbal vomit. I, I write every single day. That's what I do. That's how I process thought. That's how I think. So it's, it's I write, write, write. It's called a verbal vomit. And then I send it to editors and like and Random House. Them. And they're incredible yeah. because they put it in bite-sized chunks yeah. where consumers are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But when I think, I'm just, I'm just writing. So that's what it is. You have an ungodly amount of 20 to 25 year old entrepreneurs, want to be entrepreneurs, uh, and we have the full gamut, but the, the growth on Instagram for me ha, has, has translated to a much younger audience. What do you want to tell those characters right now before, and we're about to, let's do our first phone call. Any rant, like what's on your mind for that demo? I know this is generalizing. That structure creates freedom. Uh, so that's the kind of the paradox of creativity or innovation, that discipline and routine and hard work is what makes way for constant creativity. And then, of course, patience. Uh, and you agree with that? I, I'm living that. Uh, it's, it's more than just agreeing. It's, it's not something that came natural to you in your younger age? Patience? Yeah. No. No. I'm an, I'm an alpha dog. I, I love, I love. But I am, and patience comes very easy to me. That's I awesome. do both. And that's, that's awesome for you. I'm learning. I've learned more patience in the last 12 months than I've had to endure my Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we go into this phone call, I'm glad, sorry there. In the last 12 months. Yeah. Should I get comfy on the couch? Yeah. And kick my feet I'm, and, I'm, and do you psychology? intrigued me before we, yeah. What, yeah. what, tell me that. Um, that I thought my brand was gonna launch. I thought that I've done the 10, 12 years of hard ass work, slaving away, doing 100 shows mm -hmm. a year, logging 250,000 miles in that airplanes. That as soon as you went out weirdly, and did the videos and all this, yeah. that, you know, <laughs> dude, shit, man. That makes me so happy. So, so I don't know if you know this, but I have a TV show coming. I I'm convinced it is not gonna be the thing that people think it's gonna be. It's Apple, it's tens of millions of dollars in marketing. I am convinced, so I think my ecosystem thinks it's gonna be the moment that I become massively mainstream famous and I, I already know that it's not going to be that. It'll be another piece, mm -hmm. but like, the punchline is it's never like, you know, it happens. Simon Cowell, it happened, like it happens, but I get it, man, and I think about it all the time. The amount of times this was gonna be the thing that changes my career, remember Facebook video? We had the inside track on Facebook video? Like this is gonna be the thing. You know, like the other thing we were working on at the same time, this is, it's never the thing. I've gone through a lot of suffering to learn how to be patient, to realize this will, Take time on setbacks, this too shall pass, and all of those are building resiliency for wherever this thing goes. And I don't know that there is such thing as an, you say there's no such thing as an overnight success, but even, I, I, I wonder Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point. I'm like, I'm waiting for that, because I feel like I've done a lot of this backfill. When, I, when does it tip, when do you like, ah, oh, that was sweet, that was the moment. So I think the question becomes, are you able to reframe your brain into that same place when you were learning how to create? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out how much do you love this journey and, and how you actually change it to love it more if you're yearning for the tipping point. I would tell you that I'm sitting here psychoanalyzing myself in parallel to you and saying, or am I secretly hopeful that the Apple show won't work so big because I do love the grind. Like, I like losing. I, let me give you an example. Tony Robbins was here the other day, yep, right? I saw 10,000 cool. viewers yes, on Facebook right, Live. That was insane. Right? Ready for this? ungodly amounts of comments that I suck shit because I interrupt when I interview. You would not believe how much I love that. I love 
when people call out my shortcomings, perceived shortcomings. Tony Robbins has eight trillion interviews out there. If you wanna go watch or listen to an interview where the person doesn't interrupt them, mazel tov. I've got my style of my show, it's free, and I need to do it my way, but it was funny, I secretly love, I read them all. Yeah. Over the week, like during my little pockets over the weekend, I read them all. All of them. Every Facebook and YouTube comment that says, shut up Gary, what the fuck? You're a douchebag, I hate you, you suck shit. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> More. Like I love the process of losing in a world where I'm alpha and want to win more than anything. I'm still learning that. I am emotional, I'm an artist. I look at trollers or haters yes. and I'm like. Mm. Yeah, to me, I like, I like pet their little fluffy hair and go, I'm listening to you and I'm empathetic. By the way, I'm empathetic. This is live. Like this is super live, super no edited. It's not the only thing I do in my life. I'm not a professional podcaster that makes one fucking video once a week and sit cozy in my booth and have unlimited time. It's the only fucking thing I'm doing that day. That was, sorry. Was it's that, a channel. That, <laughs> but, oh but, my I mean, but, but, but I think, I think that, uh, I do think that the battle scars are attractive. They're what make the joys that much higher. So I don't know that the success would feel as good if you didn't feel and the I, pain And I think when I'm listening to you, I'm like, hey man, I'm, like I'm sitting because I like you. Like Brandon Marshall just texted me and said, you, you interrupt a lot. Brandon Marshall did? I love Brandon. But, Brandon, but now I don't care about Brandon Marshall's feedback way, because he's not a Jet anymore, Brandon. You only have so much weight with That's the Jets wide receiver for anyone who doesn't know that. Um, that that's that's cool. Hey, Brandon, what's up? It is, it's, it's my natural feeling. I go fast, I anticipate, and I know it's not enjoyable to watch at all times and I'm empathetic and I do apologize, but I just can't not be me. And I think this goes back to where I was actually going with this, which is the greatest thing to hack is figure out what parts don't make the journey exciting and either fix them or cut them out. And to, and to, because you lose otherwise. And to love the journey. Like I, I realized that at this point in my, in my career, uh, if I don't love what I'm doing, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grind at it. So I, I, I love the hard work, I do too. Hello? Blake, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and you're on the Ask Gary V Show with Eric Wall. Get out of here. You made it, Blake. <laughs> Where are you from and what's your question? Wow, from Harrisburg, Hershey, Pennsylvania, Chocolate Town, USA. Dude, Very that, nice. What's your name? And, uh, is it, your name's Blink? Blake. Blake. Dude, my, my great great grandfather is Carlton Hershey, invented the Hershey bar long ago. So, what the hell are we doing shout out. Here? Should we Not, I, shouldn't there be some royalties, <laughs> right? No, so anyway, cool. I'm glad you're calling from Hershey, PA. Blake, let's do it. Sure. Uh, well, I mean, you, you talk a lot about documenting the journey and, uh, you know, I, I was trying to figure out about like chicken or the egg here. Um, you, you know, you talk about starting and, you know, just doing and, and going for it, but then you talk about how you didn't start talking until you actually built, you know, built a business and built brand and built awareness. So you, you were quiet for quite some time. So Gary, chicken or the egg, you know, which one do we do I'm here with trying to build a personal brand? I'm glad you asked that because there's a very strong clarification here that you'll give to the whole audience if they're confused and I can see how they'd be confused. I would have started documenting the wine library journey, but I wouldn't have at 22 come out and said I was a business expert because I hadn't successfully built a huge business. So I would have documented being, hey guys, this is 22 year old Gary Vee. I think that I'm gonna be really successful because I've been, for the last eight years, I've been selling baseball cards. I've been in my dad's business. I think I've got this. The internet's gonna be big. You'll see it. So I would have been documenting my truth when I say I didn't come out and, and talk until I did, as an authority worthwhile of writing business books that I thought people should have followed. And so that's the clarification. I would have documented the early days of my entrepreneurship. What happened instead was I became, I felt comfortable coming out as an authority because I had serious business success at that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, I understand that. So I think you could choose one or the other. I would recommend the documenting because if you're willing to do it, the upside is extreme. It gives you another place where you might be able to be successful in. Or, I'll, for example, I think Wine Library would have done a lot more revenue if there was also tens of thousands of people following my journey of building this store. They would have come and visited because they would have thought the 25 year old punk kid was interesting and intriguing. So it would have greater reach along the way. 
I want to also say, like, I, I think you learn a lot by documenting. So just by the process of documenting, your mind is working differently than if you're just on to the next project. What so happened documenting. You started, so you start documenting behind the wall, like what the, I know it's ideated across the way. It's like, what were the biggest eye openers when you started doing the vlog in your world? That I sucked at it. That I, I knew I was good live on stage when I could see the whites of people's eyes and I could adjust. But behind the camera, when someone said, action, or now you're on, I would tense up and I would become less authentic. Yeah. So for me, it, it was just massaging through the fact that I'm, I'm not that strong yet at being on did, camera. Did winning in artistry and getting better at that give you like a, a quiet confidence in the back of your head because you solved that thing? No, it was a hook. Art, yeah. art was yeah. more therapy. Um, I use art in the presentations because people think it's cool. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it's a sanctuary back in my studio just to grow, but it's also documenting. That's why I write, is to document. But like, I think the key is always reverse engineering yourself. I think the fact that we're capable with today's technologies to document is really cool. To be very frank with you, one thing that I also want to throw out is I think people are underestimating the documentation of their lives and the impact on their families. I, I would tell you no question the coolest thing from documenting all this and what I'm doing is the amount of content my great great grandkids are gonna have in watching me and seeing the similarities in their DNA and me like it's just cool like having like I don't have a lot of family photos I know nothing about my two when I tell you I know nothing about my two grandfathers I know nothing and so like I think there's some cool the documenting is a lot cooler than you think just from that part let alone the business impact it has in the short term we also talk we open the show kind of talking about Ibiza and a couple hundred grand yeah. and private jets yeah. and that's one thing for Instagram and social media but to actually see people who aren't winning yet to watch the process the, the, the challenge that documenting I think is as interesting if not more interesting than the actual bling bling so Blake I think I think you could document the journey now and that'll be cool and it has its upside or if it's more interesting for you you put your head down for a decade and if you want to come out as an expert you come out after you've already won because it's a lot more fun to talk shit once you've accomplished something Exactly, I'm trying to do both, so I appreciate that. I know you also said, you know, instead of putting like CEO in your profile, putting like aspiring artist or something like that, so how do you build credibility if you're aspiring while the show's trying to you get You don't. Money? You don't deserve credibility if you haven't accomplished. Okay. You, may, you might become fascinating to somebody with your bravado of predicting your accomplishments, but people are trying to get credibility before they've earned it, and they think some way they can create a facade for it, and that's my fucking problem with it, because it's undermining you. The, you may trick the 10% losers, but you've lost with the 10% winners. I'm with you, and I'm I, with you. Just wanna make sure I got confirmation no, on No worries, that. brother. All right, let's move it along, because I know we're, we're, we're uh, time limit constraints and I don't want to get yelled at for interrupting. If, if, you're you an, if you're an aspiring artist, don't race to commoditize. Keep working the brand, building the brand. You might lose authenticity if you try and commoditize oh, too early. So oh, aspiring artists, stay hungry, build the brand, but don't be careful about when you turn and try and uh, turn it into a business because you could lose some of your, your authenticity. Randy? I'm going through exactly what Eric's doing. Randy, this is Gary. Randy, this is Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on the Ask Gary B Show. What's up, Gary B? Um, shout out to D Rock, first off. Um, Mark and Gary. Check. Hey, oh my God, let me turn this off real quick. All right. Um, sorry. Sorry about that. My question to you is um, I've created what I believe to be a higher brand. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of uh, followers, but it's hard for me to position myself to create um, another brand that will help support me through this because I'm doing photography and video, um, which is why um, I shout out to everybody that's using the Sony's there. Like, what should I do? I've been doing this for 10 years. I haven't really got a whole lot of traction. I've been struggling, and I need to know what to do. Eric? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we're here, brother. First of all, the in in photography, I, there's there's. And, and the, I, I apologize. I apologize for cutting you off. I do photography, video, and websites. What? Well, what more you, photography and video. What do you want to happen before Eric answers it? Like, what do you want to happen? What, do you have a side job? Want, do you have a regular job? Is this your side job? No, Go no, ahead. no. This is this is all I've I've wanted to do. I used to do club flyers. So my friend used to. Um, he used to own the club about the street, he got shut down. <laughs> and um, after doing club flyers for a while, I realized I hated flyers. So I, I got into, Don't blame I really hate doing flyers. So I decided, 
I decided to do photography and videography, it comes easier to me. And if you look, check out my work, um, uh, you actually messaged me back one time. And um, it's really good. I, I'm not going to my own horn, but a lot of people like it, but not enough to sustain a living. Um, what I really want to happen out of this is a roadmap because I've actually looked for mentors, not in photography, video aspect, but on the business side of that stuff. So like, I do want you, to transition into marketing. Do you think that, well. Do you think you need a business partner that understands how to do the business part and that you're the creative? I, there's not enough upside for them to come in. And I, I, I live at a local college down the street. Sounds like an artist. Even, even for the internships, they'll, like, they'll learn what I teach because I teach really well. And then they'll just take off on their own, which is great because I taught somebody really well how to get to at least where I am. But it's not enough upside for somebody to come in and say, hey, whatever. Do you, do you, so, love, do you love photography? Like if, if you... Uh, hit the lotto this afternoon. Would you keep? Would you do photography uh, next week? Well, I do. If I did, if I hit the lotto, I would. And I, I'm at the point. Tell the truth. Where, for, huh? Tell me the truth about this lotto question. Five million dollars. Well, yeah, yeah. If I, if I won five million dollars, they say invest in what you know, Warren Buffett, and you said it yourself. I could only invest in what I know. I'd be stupid to throw my money in something else. So yes, it'd be photography, videography. I'd, I'd look to um, build a building beside you. I understand your concept of looking to build a building and not worrying about everybody else, not destroying everybody else's building. I'd be up under you somewhere else. I'm not saying I would be the next Gary Vaynerchuk because I don't have enough energy. And I pray, for the love of God, I do not understand how you're not on supplements. Jesus <laughs> Christ, you have a shit ton of energy. Ridiculous. I do. Um, um, you've got to tell me how you do it. I don't know if it's the Russian Jewish thing. I don't know. Either way, um, I, my, 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 my idea is that photography and videography by itself is not enough considering how the, the saturation of the market to actually sustain a living. So I, I started to put my photography and videography in places where it could be more useful, i.e. the marketing side. This is what this picture can do for you versus this is a nice picture. You're like, oh, I just put it on my, my Facebook or my Instagram and hope it gets me traction. That's what I've been doing and I've been talking to people. I, I just talked to a, a, a lady who has a yoga studio. Hey, Randy, Rand, Rand. Yeah. First yeah. of all, your energy excites me. <laughs> so I, I think you're up. So Rand, listen. Let's let you know. I kind of let you go here just for kind of like show. To yeah. be very frank, let's let's pull this yeah. back in. Yeah. So you're you're trying to make a living, living creating for clients. Is that correct? Absolutely. How much time do you spend trying to get new clients? And don't bullshit me, Randy, because I will hang up. How much time every day do you spend DMing? Do you spend creating a brochure and hanging it or putting it on somebody. I'm gonna remind everybody, me printing flyers and going to the Short Hills Mall and putting it on people's cars because I had no money. Everybody thinks it's easy once it, like, no, no, we all start out at Zippo. Like, like how much time are you spending trying to get clients for real daily? Don't for real bullshit daily? me. Don't bullshit I, me. For, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm spending two hours doing it because I have so much content that I have to get out. So what are you doing? What am I doing? I'm, you, more so stuck at, I'm more so stuck photoshopping, which I... No, 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 no. On your two hours a day of trying to sell, what are you actually doing? I'm, I'm, more, I'm sitting on the computer. I mean, what, what do you... No, no, I'm asking you in detail, brother. I what, understand. Like, what's my day-to-day look like? No, one more time. You told me that you spend two hours a day trying to sell and get clients, correct? Oh, oh, what do I do during the selling? I go to um, I go to the clients that I already have, and I ask them to you know uh, their hair salons, their again the yoga studio, see if they have clients that will fit my profile versus um, cold calling. Yeah, so so I think that you are not a natural salesperson. I think that you need uh, to get very comfortable around cold calling, cold DMing, emailing websites that are local, and driving for an hour up and down Main Street and knocking on doors because that's your issue right now. You need to grab business. It's not gonna come to you. The end. All right, thanks. You're welcome, man. All right, Good. <laughs> you know, that, and that, that's tough, because he, he's a starving artist, and there's millions of them out there. One more, let's get one more call. It's tough, you've, you've got to build your brand, you've got to build the value proposition. 
and you have to hustle. Yeah, I mean, look, it's super hard. Like, like this is being in the creative business. Like, he wants to have a business. The problem with a lot of people when they want to have a business is they don't want the business part. <laughs> the hard work. They want to do the. They want to do the. And by the way, it's hard work to create the art. It's hard work to be handy and be. Some people are great plumbers. It doesn't mean that they should have a plumbing business that they own. They should go work for somebody and be the most valuable plumber. Like the craft is separate from the business. Yep. Is this? Hello? Karina. Karina, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and you're on Ask Gary V with Eric Wall. Oh my God, you have to be kidding me right now. You made it, Karina. Oh my God, that is awesome. What's your question? Okay, my question is if you have um, too much passion to do like too many things, like for instance, um, like you have too many things, like right now you do so much, like you do so much and you, you have to check Vayner to see like the... Yeah, you got, you got too many things that you want to do. Exactly, yeah. How do you pick one? Correct, yeah. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only advice, okay. Like, like Eric, what do you have? I, I mean, this is my most common asked question. Gary, I have 11 passions. How do I choose the right one to build my business around? I, I've got uh, 11 passions as well. I pour my time and energy into the ones that I'm best at and that make money. And then I keep the other ones as side projects that I will tend to as hobbies until I can actually turn them into something either that I'm very good at or that I can uh, commoditize and uh, make money at. And so, uh, yeah. Karina, I think that this is the humongous excuse by the majority of people that they have so many different things that they are passionate about as an excuse to not actually put in the 15 hours a day against something. I really mean that. And I don't, and I don't know if that's your issue, but I'm saying that because a lot of people are watching and I wanna get to this once and for all. No joke, flip a fucking coin. D- write, write all your different passions on a dartboard and throw the dart. Like just pick one. If they're all, I love when people are like, Gary, I love them all so equally. I go, great. Then there should be no concern. The other thing is, if you're trying to decide between two, when you flip the coin, it's a funny yeah. thing happens. Your, your heart will tell you, yeah. your brain will tell you which one you actually want to do. And Karina, this, this is, the fact that you have 11 things that you're super pumped about, I think that's awesome. There's a lot of people out there listening or watching that are trying to find what they're passionate about. They don't know, they're trying, they're seeking money or financial security. The fact that you have so many things to choose from is a blessing that you get to pick one and not try and find something in the world. I think that that's awesome. Yeah, I think, all right, that's awesome. That was all my question. Thank you guys for calling me. This was like a really cool experience. Thanks. Karina, don't leave yet. I got a question. Go ahead, yes. Which passion are you going to pick right now? My passion, I'm probably going to be a trader. Uh, I want to do penny stock trading. I am also really passionate. Like I have I, like, I have a great like charisma with people, so I actually like to do skits and um, modeling right now because I do that, so. <laughs> my main one is- Wait a minute, we're deciding between modeling and penny stock trading? <laughs> this is amazing, do both. Karina, can, can I, if, if, Karina, if there's anything that I can do to talk you out of penny stock or day how trading- can she, How can she find you? Oh, she can find, how can she find me? Yeah, like email you where, or hit you up on Twitter where? Like, yeah. How, like, if you're gonna uh, Karina, help her, Karina, let's do it. Karina, hit me up on uh, Instagram or Twitter, at Eric Wall, and, and send, send me a note, uh, and I'll, I'll respond to you. But I, I would, I, I would. Karina, just, great news, he's gonna turn you into a model. I'm gonna, he's gonna I'm, talk you out of pedestal. There you go, there you go. Right. A future modeling career, congratulations. What's that? Oh, we, that question really reminded me of your Jason Calcanis. Yeah, I agree. All right, so this is, this is like the big moment of the episode. So, this is insane. Oh, oh, that's right, thank you. I'm giving this away because this is so <laughs> sick. And just like, I just, to be very frank, I kind of want it for myself, but here's why I want to give it away. I'm so convinced in, in your value prop and my belief of like what this is gonna be worth to one of the, so you've gotta come and pick it up. This is the weird thing, so like I'm not shipping it, I've decided, and so if you live in Seattle and you win this, come and visit me, I'll high five you. We're gonna pick one person from the comments randomly, uh, but you have gotta answer Eric's question of the day. As a guest, you get to ask the question of the day, could be any question, and one of you randomly in Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, one of those three places, will win this. How long did this take you to make? That took me a couple of hours, but that, that's just a box that I shipped. And before we get too far, I, w- I just want to explain that number one, I don't sell any of my art anywhere, so you can't buy it 
anywhere. Um, but I have a second, I'm, I'm also into value proposition. So, so whoever calls in or whatever India sets up is gonna get this, but I also wanted to um, throw this into that box. So this is a, so this is, I was ta yep. talking about the thinker. Yep. This is the clouds and dirt. This is the hard work. This is the, the, heavy, the heavy lifting and the thinking. So not either or, it's yes and. It's the spark and the grind. So that goes that inside helpful. that box. Okay, so actually, should I ship it? I should probably ship it. We're gonna ship it. Um, so what is the question of the day, my friend? Okay, so, so what I do is I, since I don't sell any of my artwork, I hide it all over the world. I hide pieces of artwork like this and then I tweet it out in what's called art drop treasure hunts. And the first person to find it on social media gets to keep it. And so with something like this, I wanna know from whatever city you're at, what city would you like me to hide a piece of artwork from? Whatever gets the most response is where I'll uh, be aiming to hide the next uh, piece of art for Art Drop. Eric, also I wanna wrap up with this. Tell everybody where they can find you. Obviously you mentioned your Instagram, but video blog, the books, the, like what's? My website, theartofvision.com. Um, Let's link that up. Yeah, it's that. all of my socials on there. I'm just, I've, because of you, I've become fluent in Snapchat the last year, Instagram stories. So I'm kind of new to social media, but I'm building my plane as I fly it, learning, learning the game like everyone else. I love you, buddy. Thank you, it's pal. It's really good to have you on the show. Really. Pleasure being here. You keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. <laughs>